Today, we're going to be talking about sound design, why it is critical for immersing your viewers into your video, and my personal favorite techniques on how to actually build out sound design for your videos within DaVinci Resolve. If you like what you've been seeing so far, it would be massively appreciated if you could drop a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications on. It really helps a lot with creating videos for this channel, and I'm so happy that we are getting close to 1,200 subscribers. It would really mean the world to me if you could subscribe. Now, first and foremost, let me talk to you about why sound design is critical. Well, actually, why don't I just not show you instead? Let me demonstrate to you. Now, let's rewatch that same intro sequence, but without any sound design, just the music. And let's see what is different. anything? That's right, it feels like half the video is missing. Without sound design, you're lacking a crucial immersive part to your video. Sure, you can have great visuals and even a great song, but sometimes it's not enough to deliver an immersive experience that takes your viewers out of the world around them and into your video. Obviously, it is important to strive for the best sound and visuals at the same time whenever possible, but having good sound design will certainly enhance whatever is there. If you have good enough sound, you can sometimes tell a better story than the music can. So let's take a look at that same intro sequence one more time but without any music, just the video and the sound design. That's pretty immersive, right? This is the goal of sound design. I'd actually encourage you to go back and rewatch that same sequence one more time with your eyes closed and see if you visualize what the sound is telling you. So it's pretty clear that our goal is immersion, but how do we get there? Well, the first step is actually to get your sound effects and you can get these from many different places. There are places such as Epidemic Sound, Storyblocks, Soundstripe, and Freesound, numerous other sites that you can get sound effects from. I personally use Storyblocks and Freesound.org, however, this is not sponsored by either of them. 
I have a paid subscription to Storyblocks and Freesound is free. So if you are a beginner, I would highly recommend going to Freesound and getting sound effects from there because they have a massive library that you could actually enhance by adding your own sounds to for other people to use. I will leave all links to these services in the description in case you are interested. And over time, I've downloaded many, many, many sound effects from these websites for my videos. And that has accumulated into a massive folder in my computer for all of my sound effects. And the great thing about DaVinci Resolve, which is what we're going to be doing the sound design in in this tutorial today, is that it has a great way to organize your sound effects. And I will be using the studio version of DaVinci Resolve 17, but you can do this in the free version as well with no problems. And one of my favorite things is the sound library panel. And this allows you to have a library built into DaVinci Resolve that you can import without having to go through and import individual sounds every single time you make a new project. And there are many tutorials on how to import your own sound libraries, and I believe Blackmagic Design actually has a free one you can get off of their website. It's relatively simple to do so. You can just go over to the sound library panel in DaVinci Resolve and click the three dots and click import. Choose the folder in which your sound effects are in, click import, and then your files will import into the sound library and be saved there. So every time you open a project, you can search in the search bar and have access to these sound effects. And now that we have our sound effects, the next step in this process is actually making the video. I usually do my sound design after I have a basic layout. I will edit all the clips, trim them out, color grade them, whatever needs to be done to get them on the timeline and in the right order, according to the music that I'm using or whatever technique I'm using for the edit then I will do the sound design afterwards. Now you could start with sound design and build out your music, your video from there. However, I like to do it this way. So once I have all my clips laid out, what I'm going to do is actually disable my music track. Like we discussed earlier, this will allow me to focus exactly on the sound design and I won't be distracted by the music. So the very first thing I'm going to do is import some ambient sounds that will be across the entire sequence. From start to finish, there is going to be sounds that are consistent across every clip. And for this sequence, it was shot in the rain. We were in the sort of edges of a storm, so we have thunder off in the distance and rain falling in the forest. So I'm going to take a few different ambient audio tracks and I'm going to place them in the timeline and stretch them across the entire sequence. And then I'm going to go a little bit closer in, searching for sound effects that would fit for multiple clips at a time, not individual, but just getting a little bit narrower. So in a few clips towards the end of the sequence, we're near a river and that's where I was filming. So I'm going to get some river sound effects and place them in that section of the video and then keep working my way down. Basically, if you haven't noticed already, we're starting large and then narrowing our way down. So we have our big ambient sounds, more local sounds, and our isolated sounds for each clip, such as our final sounds that we'll be putting in would be stuff like footsteps, leaves kind of, you know, moving in the wind on the trees, stuff like a, a log creaking or footsteps, plenty of different options, whatever is really accurate to your scene is what you're going to want to go for. And these little sound bites are the more intricate part of sound design. I like to use these in different ways. You can use things such as one clip where my friend Joshua was using the camera, he held it up to his eye and took a picture. So what I did was I grabbed a camera taking a picture sound effect and put it on, but I also used this as a transition. So I lined it up on the cut between two clips. So when he clicks the button on the camera, then it will transition to the next shot. This is just a subtle way you can use things like this to just drive your video and make it more effective and transition smoother. And don't be afraid to try new things with sound design. There are plenty and plenty of cool techniques and things that I would have never found out about had I not been willing to just drag a random audio clip onto the timeline and just mess around with it. Just make sure that if you have a lot of clips, you normalize the audio so it's not too loud and overwhelming. And now that we've built out our sound effects across the timeline, 
You might think we're finished, but we're not. We have to make sure that each and every one of these clips are not ending abruptly. You can simply fix this by dragging the volume sliders towards the start and end of each clip and make it so it fades in and out, which is a lot more smooth than something ending abruptly. Now, obviously, for some sound effects, like for example, the camera taking a picture sound effect, you don't want to fade that out or in. It kind of does that by itself. But if you're doing something like water or something that's constant, you're gonna probably want to do that. And now we're going to get into the fun sort of effects that you can do with sound design. But this is where it really depends on what you're filming and what you have in the edit page. For this, it's in the rain. It's kind of spooky. It's a little mysterious. So what I did for this was I had a wind kind of blowing wind through the trees sort of sound effect, but it was very um, monotone. It was very constant and not very interesting, but there's an effect you can get inside of the Fairlight effects panel in DaVinci Resolve. It's called modulation. And inside of that effect, there is the Doppler effect. You, I placed this on the clip and now it'll basically randomly pan the audio from left to right so we, it sounds like we have this really like kind of spooky creepy like whoa <laughs> it's 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 something else I'll, I'll tell you that but it's stuff like that that gets the viewer very immersed into your video and another thing i like to do is for my thunder sound effects since the storm is kind of moving away at this point or coming in close depending on how you interpret it i wanted it to sound like the thunder was off in the distance not directly above us so what i did was i put an EQ effect on the audio, which can be found in the inspector tab. And I just turned it on and I got rid of all the high end, which only leaves the low end of the thunder, which sounds like a low rumble, as if the thunder was really out in the distance. And you could also layer effects on, such as the Doppler to make it sound like the thunder is all around you, like you're being closed in. Lots of different cool effects that you can do here. And another thing that I like to do is audio panning. And this allows you to basically control, it's like having the Doppler effect, but having direct control over where it's going. I could start with audio on this side and make it go over to this side. And in the panning effect, you can keyframe it. So if you have the river on, let's say one side of your shot and the shot is moving, you could keyframe it from one side to the other as the shot pans. It's a simple thing like this that makes the viewer feel like they're actually there and it feels like you're, you know, when you, because when you would be at a place like this, you wouldn't hear the river all around you. That wouldn't, that's just not realistic. You would hear the river to your right or left, depending on where you're standing. And you want to do that with your edit. So wherever your sound effect is coming from, use the panning effect to make it come from there. And if it's moving, you can use that to keyframe the location of the audio. And there are plenty of other effects, but these are just the general ones that I used, especially on this sequence. I would have never really learned these things if it hadn't just been for experimentation. So the best thing I can recommend to you is when you're doing sound design in DaVinci Resolve, just try new things. Experiment with whatever comes into your head and just keep trying and trying until you get something that sounds like you're actually there. And once you get to that point where you feel like you're actually in the video, you've successfully created immersive sound design. The possibilities for sound design are really quite endless. You can use it for such amazing things, whether it's transitions, full-blown sound design, lots of just crazy, crazy cool things you can do with it to make your videos that much more interesting and immersive. And if you have your own tips for sound design that you'd like to share with everyone else, the comment section is a great way to do that. And if you'd like to share your own work with me, you can follow me on Instagram and send me a DM. The link will be in the description. I've been posting lots of other content on there recently, you definitely don't want to miss out on that, so go give it a look. And obviously, if you found this video helpful or enjoyed it, it would be very appreciated if you could drop a like, subscribe with notifications on, and maybe even share the video with a friend who's interested in learning about sound design. It really helps my channel out, and I'm thankful for all of you watching, especially to the end. I'm Rocco Germani, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace!